believe for every drop of rain that falls, a flower grows. I believe above the storm. No, somewhere, thank you.
remember any. I've had a very lovely day. Good evening. Thank you for joining us here in person and live on Facebook. We're so very grateful that you're here. So let us just simply rest for a moment, letting go of all our cares and woes and activities of the day. And we're going to just begin our evening with our chant, a lovely meditation. So simply take time to breathe in and breathe on communing with our highest self, with our God self, knowing that God is who and what and as we are. And I'll bring you back out in about 10 minutes. If our minds stray or wander, simply and lovingly bring it back to your breath and continue to take gentle deep breaths in and gentle deep breaths out, repeating your favorite mantra, to yourself or simply, I breathe in, I breathe out. I breathe in, I breathe out.
As your meditation comes to a conclusion, gently bring your awareness back into your bodies and into your surroundings. And when you're ready, open your eyes and by all means, smile. So welcome to those who have joined us while our meditation was in process. We are so very glad that you're here virtually or in person. The important thing is that you're here and we enjoy your presence so very much. Let us begin with our opening chant, God is in this place. Lovely Tina. God is in this place. God is in this place. God is in this holy place. God is in. joy in God is in this place. So let us just turn within and experience that presence of God, the one divine source of all things, of all good, of all nature. God is the divine love intelligence that rules the universe, that inspires with us and conspires for our highest and best good. I know that each and every one of us are here on purpose and for purpose and that God is our biggest cheerleader. And just knowing that inspires me and motivates me to go forth and see what else I can do. God is our motivation, our inspiration, those ideas that just pop into our heads. I know this is true for me and I know this is true for each and every person here. And I am truly grateful for Reverend Sydney and her message this evening, knowing that she speaks through the words of God. She speaks with her lips, but she speaks from her heart. And as we open our hearts and become good receivers of the energy, we also listen with our hearts. And I am so grateful and thankful for our teachings, for our musicians, for our congregants, for everyone who's joined us here in person and also on Zoom. I'm grateful for technology, even though it still confuses me. I love it. I say thank you, God, for prayer knowing that prayer is always the answer. And it was loving kindness and great joy. I simply say, thank you, God. I let it go. I let it be. And together, we simply say, amen. Oh, that's okay. you want to? I want you to do it. Okay. Oops. Sorry, God. <laughs> Mea culpa, me. Oh, God wrong religion. God means of us. <laughs> I'm always learning. So please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, whom art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give me this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. Now I'll step down graciously. storm the smallest prayer will still be heard and I believe that someone in that great somewhere do this every single time you're here. <laughs> and it's so funny because she opens her mouth to sing and whatever I've come up with for a talk just goes out the window and now I come up with a new talk. So thank you very much. 
And she goes, you're welcome. No, it's, it's, it's better this way. Um, I was thinking about this as we started that, that song with Sam. God is in this place. And I thought, wow, you know, think about that. Um, do we really get, hold on, God is in my eye. Um, God is in this place. God is in this place. God is in this place, this place, that place, that place, your place, you, 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 as you. God is in this place. Love is in this place. Peace, truth, all of it right here. As you, as me, as the absolute demonstration of, of infinite intelligence as the absolute demonstration of creativity, of uniqueness, of something new with its own code spiritual DNA that no one else on this planet has ever had or ever will have because you are living as the unique expression of the divine, infinite, invisible power and presence we call God, we call love, we call mind, we call infinite intelligence, whatever you want to call it. All that matters is that we call upon it and recognize that it is within us and as us and around us. And as I'm listening to the song, I believe, I thought, wow, all of this stuff, where it's, whether it's a little tiny miracle or a big miracle, except that I learned early on to call them ordinaries. So as if it's a little ordinary, like a baby crying, or a big ordinary, ordinary like a baby being born, or a little ordinary like a drop of rain, or a big ordinary like healing, I believe. Can we believe when we don't see those? when what is presented to us or what is going on within our lives, within the lives of the people we love, experiences out in the world, they don't always bring us to a place of deep belief, do they? They don't always bring us to a place of saying, I know that God is in this place, love is in this place, joy is in this place, peace is here. Mostly we start saying chaos is in this place, Fear is in this place. Fear is in this place. And it can be very challenging to bring ourselves back to an awareness of God, an awareness of order, an awareness of fundamental harmony. It's a lot easier to default to the fear, isn't it? It's a lot easier to default to the chaos, to the, oh my God, what's happening now place because the world wants to do that. It's just so much easier and you get a lot of agreement and you get a lot of energy around it. Like, can you believe what is happening over there? Can you believe what he said or what she said? Can you believe what was on the news last night? And we suddenly get very invigorated, right? We get very, we get vitalized, we get energized by the crap. What is that about? What is that about? You know, years ago, I came up with um, an anagram for, I don't know if it's an anagram or, it, you tell me what it is. Anyway, I took the word fact, F-A-C-T, because we look out in the world and we go, well, that's a fact. What I see there is a fact. But facts, it's really a fluid, fluid assessment of a current trend. Because a newscaster may tell you, well, the fact is, Chet, the fact is this is going on, or the economy is this, or the country is this, or, or whatever the, the, the this is. But, you know, facts do change. They're fluid. Facts are fluid. You know, the fact was that the world was flat. The fact was that the population was only X amount. The fact was that gravity, well, I can't go there because gravity has always been in existence. We've, well, we've always, uh, scratch, we're going to clean that up and edit, okay? We're going to re-edit that later, thanks. Yeah, D deal with that in post. Okay, but the fact is my bank account looks like this. 
However, the bank account can change tomorrow. The stuff in the world will change tomorrow, or in an hour, or in 15 minutes. Facts, it's just what we look at. We look out in the world and we say, well, that's what this is, and we describe it, and we tell ourselves a story about it, don't we? We create a big story about, well, what that means, and, and especially if it is something that happens on a news broadcast, you get all these pundits who will say, well, what this means, Chet, and why am I going with Chet? How old am I? Okay, so what, what this means, these facts are telling us, no, the facts aren't telling us anything except that we're sitting here listening to someone who's making up a story about connecting dots in their way. We are here to connect the dots in our way. We get to connect the dots in our way. In fact, we get to look at and see the dots and say, those aren't dots at all. <laughs> you know, God appear, light appears, therefore God, sound, in both particles and waves, right? So maybe we're not about connecting the dots so much as we are, or the particles, as we are connecting the waves. We are about connecting the waves. And remembering that as Rumi said, you know, the mystical poet from Persia in the 13th century, I believe, that we are not a single drop in the ocean, but we are the ocean in a single drop, each of us. And therefore, what is true about that ocean, that wave, we share those qualities. So we are all part of that particle of God. We are the particles of God. Well, that feels good, doesn't it? I am a particle of God. Say that. I am a particle of God. Yeah. Okay. When we are intentional and in agreement with God, we open ourselves to inspiration, possibilities, and newness. Take dominion over your thinking and begin today to create the life you imagine. That's what I wrote to describe this talk that apparently I'm giving today, which, which is titled The Power of Right Thinking. So we need to be able to anchor our thinking in a bigger source, a bigger idea, a bigger knowingness than just our opinion of the facts or somebody else's opinion of the facts or our story about what those facts means or their story about what the facts mean, right? We have to be able to go to a bigger place. Now, one of the go-tos for me is that God always has a bigger idea. God always has a bigger idea. So there's always a bigger story going on. We might think it's about achieving this goal or this goal, but really what happens is on the way to that, we expand, we grow, we grow muscle, we succeed, we fail, we get up, we succeed, we fail, we get up, we succeed, we fail, and in that we discover our own divinity and we begin to live from that at a much higher, clearer level. So that little goal that we had, that dream, it was a vehicle to get us there. It was a vehicle to get us to a deeper awareness of God, a deeper practice of connecting with God. And by the way, I remembered today as I was doing some studying, some writing, that one of the greatest ways to understand God, especially if you have a bit of a, uh, uh, about that word, God, right? Gives on demand. G-O-D, gives on demand. This is pure spiritual law. Pure spiritual law. It is done unto us as we believe. This is cause and effect. Whatever we are presenting to this spiritual law, which gives on demand, it has one answer for us. I always say the universe has one answer, and that answer is yes. Now, it doesn't have an opinion, we might be saying, oh man, I'm just so worried about the economy and the universe says, yes, here's more to worry about, gives on demand. Or I am so, ah, so happy that I get to be a part of like this community. It so enriches and enlivens me. And spiritual law, the universe goes, yes. You see, we get to do it. We get to choose. We get to be those beings of choice who stand in that awareness of right thinking. Right thinking. Ernest Holmes wrote, God is all there is. There is nothing else. 
whether it be a bird, a beast, a fish, a tree, a man, or an archangel, God is still all there is. All things are manifestations of the one presence, the one power, and the one life. This is the secret of secrets. So that means that all that stuff that we have told our stories about, that that's bad, that's wrong, that's really worrying me, and that's a challenge, it's still God. So our journey, I believe, is for us to constantly uncover that stuff that we have going on within us that is telling us that there is God and something else, that there are two powers or that we are separate from God. So there's God and evil. There's God and war. There's God and pain. No, all of it is God, and that stuff that's going on is what happens on the way to our uncovering a greater awareness of God. You know, we have arguments with people because I'm going through my stuff, Mary Catherine's going through her stuff, and our stuff bumps up against each other. And it's not always going to do that, right? And when that happens on a global basis or an international basis, yeah, there's going to be conflict. There's going to be challenge. But we can perceive it as the greater bringing to the light of who and what we are. And we can still stand in truth about right thinking, about who we are, that God is all there is. The thought and the idea of God must become warm and intimate and colorful in your consciousness. The sense of the indwelling presence must be real and immediate. For there is no there, only here. There is no then, only now. No tomorrow, only today. There is no place where you, the individual I, leaves off and God, the universal I am, begins. To you there is only God and God in you and the two are one. Seek then to cultivate this divine indwelling presence for it will respond to you and you will know you are not alone. So that's Ernest Holmes. And as I was working, in, if you don't know, Ernest Holmes is the founder of this teaching. And he was a, an American mystic, very much influenced by different religions and teachings of the world. And Emerson was one of those teachers that he took to be his own, even though they were not on the planet at the same time. So I, as I was thinking about this idea of right thinking, I thought, well, I want to get a, a good context here and see if I can find something that might sort of launch us into a, a bigger discussion. So I went to Google. And you know, Google loves telling us what right thinking apparently is. I never knew Google was so judgy. Because all of the stuff that came up, and here are just a few, a right thinking person has opinions, principles, or standards of behavior that you approve of. Oh my, that's like a club I don't think I'd want to belong to. And here's the definition, having acceptably proper or correct convictions and beliefs. Really? What does that mean? Um, if you think that someone's opinions or beliefs are sensible and you agree with them, that's right thinking. <laughs> What does it have to do with anything? <laughs> and so then I thought, well, wait a minute. Let's, let's look at some of the ideas from Buddhism, right? We've heard about the, noble, the, the Eightfold Path, right? And we have right understanding, right intention, which is also right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. So I looked at this, and I thought, well, there are three possibilities from this list to launch us on our path to understanding. There's right intention, right thought. I thought, well, this has got to be the winner. According to Buddha, our thoughts are very powerful. Well, I agree. They determine our mental states, such as happiness or sadness, and then our actions. Absolutely. With this understanding, one is then asked to have the right intentions. With this understanding, uh, while this means several different things, it is essential, is essentially asking you to turn away from the vicious, vicious cycle of craving and desire by committing to a lifestyle of self-improvement and ethical conduct. And this, the commitment to a life of heedfulness, Buddha finds the seeds of happiness. I thought, well, that works. That absolutely works with what we teach here and what we cultivate here and what we pursue on our own. And the thing about science of mind is we don't tell you what to think. We offer possibilities of how you can expand the thinking that you have or how to begin to create a new perception of who you are and what life is and how it actually has your back and is for you absolutely is for you. God is your greatest cheerleader. Gives on demand, your greatest cheerleader. That's, that's what we teach. God is for you, not against you. 
Then there was right concentration. It's a mental discipline that aims to transform your mind. Okay, that works for me. As the core practice of meditation, right concentration is a foundational activity within Buddhist thought and practice. Well, that it is for us too. So, you know, we do spiritual practice before we begin our services so that we might come to a habit of just dwelling in a knowing, in the thought of good, in the thought of love, whether it's God's the love that I am, right where I am God is, God is in this place, or just breathing in and breathing out. That's why we do that, so that we can have a moment's respite from all of the busyness and come to a place of remembering to remember, right? So then I like this one, right effort. Buddha recommended that his disciples make the right effort to rid oneself of unwholesome thoughts, words, and actions, and ultimately to perfect a good and wholesome state of being. All righty then. There are certain levels of effort that the Buddha encouraged, with the higher levels taking more effort and practice than the lower levels. And so the lowest level is the effort to try and prevent bad thoughts or bad things. Okay. The level after that might be getting rid of a bad thought or feeling. So that's what we do. We, we look at our thinking and we cleanse. We cleanse the perceptions. You know, where am I, where am I um, thinking in a limited way? Where have I created this mess that is before me? And by the way, if you ever want to know what it is that you've been thinking, what your beliefs are, all of that stuff, and you're thinking, how do I know really, really how I'm thinking? What's going on? Right in front of you. Life is a mirror. Will absolutely reflect back to you. Reflect back to you in your experience, in your relationships, and yeah, in your perceptions, what you have been thinking and believing. So then the third step is you would try to have good thoughts and feelings. Okay, so we create a new mindset. Then the highest level, which requires the most effort in this Buddhist idea, is practice and will. And it would be to try to maintain and perfect a good, wholesome state of mind and subsequently being. So we're all after the same thing. We want to have a life that works. We want to have a life that gives us peace. We want to have an experience of, of being able to be poised within our own skin, right? We want to be able to be in our own skin and know that it's okay. And also to look at the people around us and say, Wow, you are perfect, beautiful, and beloved, and acceptable in my sight. You are perfect in your skin. Because when we are clear about our own divinity, then we get to see that in other people. And that's really, really what we are here to do. Because we want, we're, no one is here alone. You know, Ram Das said, we're all here to walk each other home. And it might be a home you've never been before. It might be a home of peace that you've never experienced. But we're here to walk each other home. And so we get to do that together. I f was looking at um, an author that I love, Christian D. Larson, who wrote years and years and years ago. And one of his books, um, and I think it was probably published in the 30s, maybe before that, was called The Pathway of Roses. And I really recommend this to you. The good that is inherent in everything is infinitely greater and more powerful than any imperfection or undeveloped condition that may exist in the outer world. Therefore, when this good is recognized and brought out into real life, that which is not good must disappear. Ha! Oh. Do you hear that? When we recognize this good, when we celebrate it, when we identify with it, identify as it, then the, everything that is not like it must disappear because the energy of love is greater than everything else. You know, these aren't random words, God is love. <sighs> Gives on demand. That's love. That's the power and presence of love. So take God away from a God of personality, a God of opinion, a God of judgment, a God of history, a God of geography, any of that. Bring God to a place of God is love. Take away the word God and love. It's love. 
That's we, we are here as demonstrations of love. We are here as celebrations of love. And we are here not just as static examples. Look at me, I'm love. Watch me, I'm love. I see your love, your love. No, we are here as the verb. We are here as love in action. That is our sacred duty. That is our sacred assignment. We all have an assignment here. We've been given this assignment from love, to be love. And our nature is love. Believe it or not, everyone's nature is love. Even those political leaders and people you don't like and didn't vote for, take a deep breath. Their nature, fundamental nature, is love. It is love. Do you realize that if we could admit that, if we could practice that, if we could put that awareness on, even though we don't want to, and begin to affirm that, that the world would change like that. Because what we're doing is contributing to the collective. And the collective right now doesn't have, not always doesn't have this big expansive idea that everyone is love, everyone is loving. I think the collective wants to have that, but you know, this collective or the race mind as we also call it, it gets to be a pool, a cauldron of creation for whatever is given to it. So if you and I are giving fear to it, it will absolutely add that to the mix. Anybody remember reading or seeing the movie Water for Chocolate? And you remember when, when she was angry, the food tasted really bad? And when, when she was filled with love, how incredibly delicious the meals were. And that's the same thing, that we get to, we are participating in that cauldron, in that, that preparation of that divine meal, that divine nourishment. We are contributing to it. So what do we want to contribute, especially if we have children or grandchildren? or we just want to know that life continues on this planet, are we contributing to that pool the willingness, the willingness to declare love? Though we feel it not, though we see it not, and though we really, really are dedicated to just thinking, man, that guy, I just want him to, and believe me, I'm right there with you. But we have a choice to make because we are beings of free will. So we can invest in the pain, we can invest in the fear, we can invest in the snark, we can invest in all of that, or conversely, we can really look at our thinking and move from that place of blaming, move from that place of thinking that we're a nail and life is just one big hurricane hammer coming at us, trying to pound us down, we can move from that place of victim consciousness into a place of, I have choice. That's the first step, we have choice. How do we want to feel? How do we want to feel? That's one of the things I ask when I am working with a client in counseling, because I will hear about what's not working and what, what, what is just painful. And I'll say, well, what, what do you want? And sometimes coming up with what you want is hard. How do you want to feel is a lot easier. And those feelings generate more of those feelings and make us open and available and receptive to the magnificence of possibility. The God gives on demand, right? It makes us available. And as we become more and more available, then we become these shiny, loving creations, which is what we are anyway. Only now we're really living it and people can see it and we can, we can touch them in that same awareness. I have great mystical realizations in my shower. I'm not sure what it is. I don't think the Buddha blessed it, but although I do have a Buddha in there. Um, but, but one of them I came up with was the word WAG, W-A-G. I thought, okay, well, that, that's interesting. Willing, aware, and grateful. Can we be willing? Can we be willing to see things differently? Can we be willing to grow? Can we be willing to move from our judgment, from our resentment, 
from our, our anchored decisions about somebody else's guilt and wrongdoing? Can we be willing? And then can we be aware? Can we have a greater awareness? Can we have a greater awareness of who we are, of who they are, of the, the, the beauty, the limitless beauty of this universe? of the order and the harmony of this universe, that same creative, oh, that keeps the planets in their orbits. Holy cow, I couldn't do that if you told me to. I can barely keep my nail polish on. But if we can become aware, aware, it's the awareness that brings about a lot of healing. Anyone who's in a 12-step program, you know that awareness is like the big, big leap towards recovery, right? And then finally, gratitude. We had a good discussion about this last night in class. And it's not about being grateful for the mess, for the, the stuff that's going on. It's about being grateful in it. Gratitude in it. Grateful in the midst, in the experience. So even though so much stuff might be happening, whether in you or in the world, to be able to find just one thing, like, I'm still breathing. I'm alive. I have people I love. I have a dog I love. I have an 18-year-old cat that is still running the house. I have friends that I cherish. I have people that trigger me to grow. Not necessarily friends, but they trigger me to grow. So I'm grateful for the growth. So there's gratitude, so there's willingness, there's awareness, and there's gratitude. Wag. Of course, then I wanted to come up with a wag the dog, and I couldn't come up with more, you know, for T-H-E and D-O-G, so maybe that's next week's talk. But if we can wag, right? And it's silly, if we can wag, <laughs> Can we wag and be silly? Because, you know, this is a god of, of creative whimsy. One of my favorite teachers, Helen Street, used to say, if you think there's no whim in God, that we're not living in a quantum whim, then I ask you, why are giraffes here? <laughs> what is a giraffe other than a product of whim? Like at one point, God said, man, I just need something playful and ridiculous. Giraffe, there. There, that's it. Nobody will be able to source the evolution of that. Watch them. <laughs> so we are here for fun and for joy, for quantum love, for quantum joy, for quantum possibility. You know, again, the universe has one answer to our thoughts and our beliefs. And what is that answer? Oh, I can't hear you. The universe only has one answer. What is it? It's yes. So what are we going to give to the yes? Are we going to give what we want and how we want to feel and, and what we can imagine and what is possible and how we want the world to be and how we want to, to show up as, as that love that can shift the world, that can create a space of inclusivity, of justice, social justice, of peace, of equality, are we willing to do that? Can we give that to the yes? Thank you, because otherwise, I think we're in trouble, because we're going to be giving our fear to the yes. We're going to be giving our negativity to the yes. We're going to be giving our judgment to the yes, our resentment and our conviction that, oh, life is just going to suck, and then we're going to die, and the universe is going to say, yeah. I'd rather it not be like that. Yeah? Anybody else? We get to be the yes, and we get to present to the yes. If we can shift our mental body, our thinking, our consciousness, to even just the willingness to be available to good and to life-affirming attitudes, the yes will show up for us the way we show up for it. Because again, life reflects. Life, it's all about the mirrors. This is a mirror. It's just a reflection. And everyone who you have called into your life is there to show you what you are thinking. Isn't it funny that we cast people in the role of something to show us what is going on in our consciousness and then we call them enemy? 
And they're really just there to show us what we're thinking. They're just reflecting. And if we can look at them and say, huh, what part of me is being reflected back to me? Is it my own fear? Is it my own uh, joy? Because it reflects the positive too, by the way. Life is all that reflection. What is going on in the world that might want to show me something that's going on in me? Well, there's a lot of fear in the world. Do I have fear? Oh, you bet. Who doesn't have fear? But you know what? When we acknowledge it, when we recognize it and call it what it is, it doesn't have power anymore. It can't sneak up on us. It can't sabotage us. Because now we have acknowledged it. We've brought that to the light, and it will be disempowered because we have the power to think rightly. So I invite you this week to really get curious about what you are thinking, what is showing up in your life, and ask yourself, what's the common ingredient here? Is it me? What is going on here? Is there something that I might be contributing to the creation of this experience? What is a belief that I might have been holding about my unworthiness? that might be creating people or a person in my life who is judging me. Am I judging a lot? Is that why I have someone in my life who's judging? Am I blessing a lot? Is that why I have people in my life who are blessing? And just get curious, without judgment, without shame, because this is quantum love, this is quantum fun, this is about really, really excavating what's going on, getting curious, and, and as Ernest Holmes says, you are in the laboratory of the infinite. What shall you create today? What will you create? Let's pray. Thank you. We turn within to the quantum whim, knowing that we are the quantum experience of God itself. We are the quantum experience of love itself that we are the joy of creation in vivid, powerful, demonstrable expression. That each of us, a unique, unique piece of the puzzle. Each of us a thread in that tapestry. Each of us necessary to the way that God expresses and heals, to the way that God dances. So we now declare that we are willing and open to be in that dance and to make it up, to make it up, to know that even as we make it up and we fake it up, we are absolutely giving voice to divine inspiration, which is limitless, which is just love, finding new ways to stand up and say, I am here, I am that I am, I am one with all life, I am one with the giraffe, and I am ready to wag. So I know that we each are willing, we are aware, and we are grateful. We acknowledge that which perhaps we have been hiding from, knowing that it too is part of God, and it is two is here to bless us. This two is God. This two is good. This two has a blessing in it for me, and I demand to see that blessing here and now, said Emma Curtis Hopkins. So we call on that awareness, which is within ourselves, because we are one with that same, oh, that same incredible intelligence that was Emma. We are one with the same creativity and energy that was Mozart, that was Beethoven, that was Einstein. We are all one with it. And how wonderful that here we are, to give voice to it and to fly because I know for each one of us that as we give voice to God, God gives us wings and we soar so far beyond what we ever thought was possible and it's all in a place of joy. And that together we are not just walking each other home, we are flying each other home. How wonderful it is to know that. And as we embrace this thought, this energy and this feeling about God flowing in, as, through, and around us, I know that we extend it past this, the doors of this sanctuary, past this parking lot, past this community, into the world, so that it might embrace everyone on this planet, all creatures, all people, all creatures, all nature, all of it, knowing that the love of God is fully present, and we say yes to that creation, creating, recreating, creating, recreating, expanding, 
exploding in joy and love. We send that same love to Ukraine. We embrace the children. We embrace the leaders. We embrace the people. We embrace the soldiers. We embrace all of it. We send that same love, yes, 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 to Putin. Yes, to Russia. Yes, to all of those whom we have believed we were separate from, knowing that as we declare our oneness, we are calling forth a higher degree of love in all humanity, including Putin, yes. We are willing to let go of any thoughts that, is, that have limited us before, knowing that they have no power here. And I demand and declare that the law of mind now assists each of us in attaining and maintaining that high consciousness of oneness, of God, of love, of peace. And I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. I invite you to say that with me. I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And I bless this church. I bless this community. I bless all paths to God, all churches, all synagogues, all ashrams, all temples, all, all places where beings become aware of a different possibility. For there are so many paths to God but there's only one final destination, and that is love. I know that we are all guided there, for that is the blueprint that we work from. We walk on that map, and we are blessed with every step on the journey. I am grateful to know that this is so, for simply all we've done here tonight is recognize the truth about God and therefore the truth about each and every one of us. And it is good. It is quantum good. So I release this word into law, Spiritual law, spiritual law gives on demand. And I say, and so it is, and together we say, amen. So now is when we invite you to give us your, give this church, give this community to help support this community with your tithes, your love offerings, your gifts. Do we have the air on? Is Blair here? I feel like I am 35 again and having a hot flash. It's, I know, I know. I thought it was just me. It's not. It's all of us. And man, you don't want to see me take this shirt off. So, um, or maybe you do. Okay. So now is when we invite you to participate in the ongoingness of this community through your love offerings, through your tithes, through your sharing. And I invite you to just affirm with me, and it's right here. Thank you very much, Adam. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is.
say thank you. That's why I didn't want to miss my cue. You're awesome. I'm confused. No, you're not. You're clear and perfect and all. I am. I am indeed. Thank you for recognizing that. And thank you all again for being here. And I'm going to put my glasses on so I'll be able to read the words that are printed here. Our announcements for this evening is that we make it easy for you to give to our church. You can text to give the number and the QR, that's that fuzzy little square thing on the back of your um, program. Um, you can use that or you can simply go to nhcrs.org forward slash give and they will more than happily help you with uh, giving. Prayer with a practitioner is available after the service in person and also on Zoom. Do take advantage of that. We really love to pray with you. Our Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sidney Steen. Meditation begins at 6.50 p.m. and the service will begin at 7 o'clock p.m. And Reverend Sidney's message next week uh, will be, are you ready to receive? And oh dear God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, something I must admit I've had an issue with, so I really look forward to hearing about that. The Abundance Workshop 2022 with Reverend Mark Vieira, the first four Mondays in August, and it's on Zoom only. And if you haven't attended any of his Abundance Workshops, they are beyond fabulous. And remember, abundance goes far beyond the pocketbook. Abundance of health, abundance of relationships, abundance of joy, abundance of um, creativity. The, the abundance is endless. And Dr. Mark will bring his 30 years of experience and wisdom to the amazing workshop where you'll learn to expand the prosperity consciousness. The class will be from 6.30 p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. and again on Zoom only. And it will be based on the book of Spiritual Economics by Eric Butterworth. And I still have mine from practitioner training. I really love this book. <laughs> Please sign up today on our website. And the cost is responsible giving. So... How's that for you? And then just remember how to give. Okay. Save the dates uh, to come and walk our labyrinth. We are bringing it back to the sanctuary. And it will be Friday, August 19th and or Saturday, August 20th. The 19th will be just the uh, labyrinth. And they explain what it means. And it's a beautiful setting. And a lot of work in, goes into that. And we always appreciate the helpers. And if you would like to be a helpie, please uh, contact Sam Crutcher. And um, on Saturday, we will also have the labyrinth and a, a healing uh, center for you to participate in. And it's just come both days. It's free. Uh, okay. It's a nice mini retreat for yourself. It really is. Yeah. And um, we have Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. And Zoom meditation is every morning, Monday through Saturday from 7.55 to 8.15 a.m. And I will be there at 7.55 tomorrow morning. 
and I hope you will join us. And please visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events and to sign up for a weekly e-blast and monthly newsletters. So are you going to thank everybody and pray us out? Yeah, okay. I'm going to thank people and pray you out. <laughs> thank you. So we have a lot of people that, that um, gosh, I remember one time when Dr. Mark said this, it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort and people to put together this whole dog and pony show. So I want to thank some of them. Uh, we have Luana Schertzberg holding our vigil tonight, and she's not sitting over there napping. She is absolutely in this place of high consciousness, knowing for all of us, not just while we're in this room, but as we move out into the world, that we are blessed and that we are surrounded and guided by love. Um, on Facebook Live, Dean Regan is helping us. Zoom support is Alma Alvarez and Mark Kroll. Lights and sound, Adam Keshen. Yay! <laughs> Ask him about his new puppy. And Colleen Butler was our greeter and our usher. We have a media team tonight of Doreen Remo, Nikki Zavara, Brenda Jordan, and Blair Thompson. Yay! <laughs> Tina Meeks. She's a goddess. Go to iTunes. Just get all of her, her, her music. You know, yeah. You work hard. We need, to, we need to buy your music and support you. It's really, really, it's so good. I have the first CD that you ever did. Yes. Like, years ago. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Mary Catherine O'Hart, thank you so much for your pulpit support. <laughs> Sam Krieger, you are a god. We love you. I'm Reverend Sydney, and I'm just going to pray us out. What do you think? <laughs> Oh, Pasha. What is that? Pasha. Anyway, all right. So I recognize that truly we are blessed. And we move into this world guided, guarded, and open hearted. For we are blessings of God, blessings of life, blessings of love. And we say yes to the yes, knowing that all things are working together in the highest good for each and every one of us. We know it to be so. We delight in that being so. And we say, yeah, God, yahoo, and so it is. Ta-da. Amen. <laughs> let's all stand and sing Blessed Always one yep, more time. Let's stand. Let's do it. All right. We love you, honey.